from a lost tribe that kills intruders to a snake that was speared by a porcupine. This is Trending Tuesdays. And before starting, here's a shout out to Puma Bear. They really enjoy the content and even subscribe, so that is much appreciated. Thanks for all that support and cheers. Number eight, Stromato. A tomato-loving student in China got two for the price of one when he bit into this fruit and discovered a strawberry inside. When he and his mates could not figure out what the freakish fruit might be, he posted images to social media for assistance. Some of the guesses included it being some sort of GMO or genetically modified organism or the result of hybridization, but local agricultural experts don't think it was actually a strawberry inside the tomato. More likely, a farmer had used used hormones on the fruit to counter a lack of nutrients, and that could have resulted in a dried core that resembled a strawberry. Others think it may have been a specially developed stuffing tomato. They're similar to bell peppers in that they have a hollow core and can be packed with various fillings. Experts say most such tomatoes appear to have a strawberry within. Sabertooth fish. The Fang Blenny is a fish that gets its nickname thanks to two large canine teeth that thrust out of its lower jaw. That gives it a fearsome appearance, even though it only measures around two inches long. They also use a unique venom that contains a quality similar to opioids. When a would-be predator is bitten, the venom causes it to become dizzy and slow. Experts say the venom itself causes no pain, but leaves the victim too disoriented to give chase, which gives the fine blunny time to escape. Now scientists believe the chemically unique venom might serve as the basis for developing the next blockbuster pain-killing drug. Fine blunnies are found in the Pacific region, including the Great Barrier Reef. CSI Loch Ness Sightings of the Loch Ness Monster have been reported since 565 AD, although the first photo of Nessie was published in 1934. But in all that time, no definitive proof of the cryptid has been established. That could change thanks to a scientist from New Zealand. Neil Gemmel, and I hope I got the name right, says the mystery can be solved by doing a DNA test of water samples from the famous loch, and then using police forensic techniques to analyze them. He explains that environmental DNA is used to monitor marine biodiversity, and genomic technology can detect the cells lost by large organisms as they move through their environment. The findings can be compared to worldwide databases that comprise a majority of known living things. Evidence of any anomaly in the lock would thus be detected. Now, that does sound easy peasy, but will that help close the case on Nessie? Let us know what you think. Missing Teeth Megalodon is recognized as the largest shark that ever existed and swam in the oceans up to around 2 million years ago. But remains of the big beast are still being found today, recently in Naples. A paleontologist discovered a tooth that might have belonged to the prehistoric critter. It was found during an excavation of local tunnels that lie around 100 feet below the surface of the city and were carved into 16th century aqueducts. The mega-sized tooth is more than half the size of an adult hand, and experts say it's possible it had been sitting there for millions of years. Before establishing its origins, experts plan to conduct a thorough analysis of the tooth, and if it does belong to the ancient super predator, it once fit into a huge mouth that could exert a bite force estimated to exceed some 18 tons. Signs of life? Fast radio bursts, or FRBs, were first detected by astronomers more than 10 years ago, and the sporadic bursts of cosmic radio waves have proven to be a puzzle ever since. At one time, it was thought the phenomenon was of human origin, but we're told that theory has since been disproven. The idea that the bursts might be indicative of alien life trying to contact us might not be so far-fetched, though, because scientists in Australia have confirmed the bursts do originate from out of space. That's based on studying three FRBs using the Molongo Radio Telescope near Canberra. The telescope's huge collection capacity was used in conjunction with highly sophisticated software to pinpoint the origins of the three FRBs. Telescope data confirmed that all three bursts did indeed originate from outer space, so it looks like ET might be phoning home. Should we pick up? 
World Wide Wall. Did you know there is a massive wall located beneath our oceans? Now that is according to a video posted by a YouTube channel named Flat Earth Arabic. The mysterious wall is said to stretch for tens of thousands of miles and it was detected on Google Earth. Those in favor of the wall's existence argue that it cannot be a natural formation because of its sheer size and linearity. Others counter that the anomaly is simply the result of a satellite image stitching error, resulting in a type of digital seam. And that sort of thing can occur when there's a glitch in the process of assembling multiple photographic images with various fields of view to produce a high resolution image. But if it really is a massive wall, then what was its purpose? And who could have built it? Do not disturb. North Sentinel Island is located in the Andaman Sea, southeast of the Bay of Bengal, and the Indian government has made it illegal to approach within three miles of that island. That's because it's home to a tribe known as the Sentinelese, who are thought to have inhabited that island for at least 60,000 years. Rare footage of the indigenous people was captured recently for a documentary, and it's one of the few times outsiders have attempted any sort of contact with the Sentinelese since the 1960s. Prior attempts to communicate with them have been met with hostile response, including efforts to provide them assistance after the 2004 tsunami, and workers then tried to drop food parcels there. A tribesman fired an arrow at the helicopter on that occasion, and they're known to respond similarly when any low-flying aircraft approaches. The tribe has also gained a reputation for killing intruders on sight after taking out two fishermen in 2014. They were illegally fishing in the area when they drew too close to the island shore. But experts say that whether it's a friend or enemy, any intruder will likely be greeted with spears and arrows. The Indian government has since made it a crime to attempt contact with the Sentinelese, and that may actually work to the tribe's benefit. Because they've lived in isolation so long, experts think they could be highly susceptible to diseases like the flu or measles. Because researchers estimate the tribe's population at no more than 500, they might easily be wiped out by an epidemic. Did you know? Many experts think that Sentinelese could be directly descended from the first humans who emerged from Africa. Points taken. Now, we recently ran a story on Scary Saturday that involved a rock python eating a porcupine, and the quills eventually killed the reptile. Well, now we've found a similar scenario that took place at an undisclosed location in Brazil. A boa constrictor there had apparently tried to eat a porcupine, and while we do not see the actual attack, the results are clearly shown, and the snake was the worst for it. It's shown with a massive amount of white quills impaling it. Footage depicting the gruesome scene was posted online, and stills from that video are a bit blurry as you might expect, but there's enough detail shown to make you recoil at the sight. The critter writhed in agony in the video, which lasted for a couple of minutes, but we don't know the exact outcome of the story. This is Trending Tuesdays.